In this video, we're going to be looking at sketching r equals root 2 sec of pi over 4 take away theta. Now, this is a particular case of this type of uh, polar graph, r equals p sec alpha take away theta. And hopefully through this example, you'll be able to see what uh, you should do about sketching this type of graph um, and what type of graph you'd be expecting to get. So, the first thing I would do here is I would think about replacing sec with cosine. Okay, so I'm going to write this as r equals root 2 over cosine of pi over 4 take away theta. Now let's multiply up by the cosine pi over 4 take away theta. So r cosine pi over 4 take away theta is equal to root 2. Now this bit here, we can start to see that, oh, we've got this r cosine theta, perhaps, okay? But in its current form, we can't really infer much from it. So what we'll do is we'll use the compound angle formula to break this apart. So that would be r times cosine pi over 4 cosine theta plus sine pi over 4 sine theta is equal to root 2. Now, cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So, r, um, well, let's, let's write that first. So, root 2 over 2 cosine theta plus, and that's root 2 over 2 as well, sine theta equals root 2. Let's uh, divide through by root 2 and multiply through by 2. So we're going to get r cosine theta plus r sine theta is equal to 2. Now r cosine theta is of course x and r sine theta is y. So actually we get the line x plus y equals 2. Okay. And so this actually described the straight line x plus y equals 2. So what you'll find is that these represent straight lines. And my probably the easiest way to think about sketching them is going through the process that I've just done. Uh, using the compound angle formula, breaking it apart, putting it into Cartesian form. That's probably the easiest way to go about those. But the question is, how does this relate back to that? Okay, how could you have read this from that form? Um, could you have gone through this process without um, have actually converted it into Cartesian form? Well, what you find is that the value here, the p that you've got here, tells you how far away your line is from the origin. So it actually tells you this distance here. So that distance is p. So effectively, as alpha changes, what it does is it gives you a tangent to the circle centered at the origin with radius p. The angle alpha is that angle there. So in fact, if instead I had been given r equals, let's say, um, 3 sec, uh, let's go with uh, what should we do? 3 pi over 4. Take away theta. Let's say I had that. What would that look like? Well, the first thing is that I know it's of distance 3 from the pole. And 3 pi over 4 is round here. So actually, that is the distance 3. And so it is... 
a line perpendicular to that from the origin, like so. Okay, now, just like that, and that's your 3 pi over 4. Of course, you might be interested in where that then crosses the x and y axes. Well, in order to do that, uh, we could look at when theta is uh, pi over 2. So I can substitute that in. So I'd have 3 over cosine of 3 pi over 4 take away pi over 2. And we get 3 root 2, so that's 3 root 2. And if I put in theta as uh, pi, we get 3 root 2 again. Um, so that's minus 3 root 2, because of distance 3 root 2. So if you wanted the Cartesian form, then that would be y equals x plus 3 root 2. OK, so going through the conversion to Cartesian form tells you what type of graph this is. But you can then infer from it um, how you can go directly from this format to a sketch of the graph.